A startup from London wants to disrupt the smartphone industry. Much ado about nothing. That's not all. Why are all tech companies around the world in the smart sunglasses race? Is that really a thing? Will they replace your normal eyewear? All that and a lot more. I'm your host Ayush Alavadi and this is Tech Today. It's not often that a startup from London enters the smartphone industry only to disrupt it. There's a lot of clutter, especially in the mid-range segment, and a company from London has decided to break that clutter. I have with me the Nothing Phone One. What about the camera? Look at the lights. The battery life. The lights look amazing. And the processor. The lights are so cool. Well, you get the drift. I can't keep deviating and digressing like every other review on the planet talking about the lights. Now, they look great, but they look like a mere smokescreen or a distraction. There's a lot under the hood. It's ironic that this is a transparent back. But has this device truly broken the clutter? Are there reasons for you to actually upgrade or downgrade to this device? Well, that's what we're going to tell you in this in-depth review on Tech Today. Let's talk about design. So throughout this review, we're going to tell you the reasons you might want to purchase such a device and the reasons you should steer clear of the Nothing Phone 1. Is it much ado about nothing? No more nothing puns from us. But if you have a look at this device, it looks really cool. So we got to give them full marks for design. If you show this to anyone in office or any family member at home, they will have a look at the back of the phone and say, hey, what kind of cover have you put on your iPhone? Because it does look like that at first glance. Even the camera placement, it looks eerily similar to an older iPhone. But then when you flip it around and you have a look at the US, it comes of course with Android 12 with the Nothing OS on top, which is largely bloatware free. And I think that is amazing. Well, you will need a lot more product innovation than just a Glyph interface. That's one thing which is very special about this device, which is the Glyph interface. If you have a look at it, it's simple. It sounds fancy in tech geek lingo. It's 900 LED lights at the back of the phone. These 900 LEDs will pop up in the center, in the top over here, at the bottom. And they actually do have significant functions and use cases. For instance, this one at the bottom, if you're charging through a USB-C port, will light up and tell you what the battery status indicator is like. You give it a little bit of a shake and all of a sudden you know what the battery charging status is like. You go up over here and you end up reverse charging and this comes with reverse wireless charging and wireless charging for this particular device. And it's pretty good at that. The reverse wireless charging feature, I put my AirPods on it a few times and honestly, it's more of a gimmick because there's a lot of heat energy that is lost. Now this Glyph interface is kind of interesting because no other phone seems to do this. You did have those LED indicators on phones of yesteryear but this takes it to a whole new level. For instance, if you use one of the 10 ringtones available on Nothing OS, the current one is Beetle. And you'll see it light up in different ways in sync with this particular ringtone. You switch to Squirrels and you have, well, a different sort of user experience. Do these LED lights at the back end up taking a lot of battery from the device? Well, we will tell you that in a subsequent review when we've actually tested the phone. Now let's address the elephant in the room, the Snapdragon 778G. This is clearly not a flagship processor. If you're a gamer, this isn't an ideal phone for gaming. And if you're a camera enthusiast, then maybe this isn't the best pair of cameras on a smartphone ever. So then who is this phone for? Well, I think this is a phone which is targeted at those people who are bored of all the devices in the mid ranges from the Pocos and the Icos and whatnot and want something which is kind of aspirational. We have updated the software on this particular device but we haven't seen some of these things in practice. People are talking about dead pixels, a green tint on the display. A lot of users who picked up retail units, very excited about the Nothing Phone 1, are complaining about these issues. So we hope 
that the company is taking these issues seriously. We'll tell you about some of the issues we faced with this device. Honestly speaking, the software at this particular stage is a little buggy. The camera performance is underwhelming. It maxes out at 4K 30. And honestly, if it's not a well-lit atmosphere over here while we're shooting, it's all right. If you take it to a low light sort of surrounding, it starts performing really badly. Also, if you're taking a selfie, and that's very important with these particular devices, then this is the selfie that the camera takes. But there is a catch. If you actually flip the phone over, switch on the glyph light, and then take a photo like this, this glyph light at the back, strangely, is a really cool filler light when you're shooting, if you're vlogging, especially in a low light surrounding, out in the dark. This is pretty much a ring light, but spending more than 30,000 rupees on a ring light isn't the ideal way to go. But nevertheless, it is a feature on the phone and it can be used and they've given you that functionality. So the lights aren't just a gimmick, they also serve a use case. But if you're investing your hard-earned money in this product, you need to know that there are things that work for it and things that don't seem to work at all. This is their first such product in the smartphone space, so it is work in progress, we understand. It has a very cool design element, this glyph interface is kind of refreshing to see. The OS is great in terms of their clean implementation of Android, but it does have its fair share of bugs. When you're talking about battery performance, camera, look, this is a mid-range smartphone. So is the processor. So who's the nothing phone one for? Is it for the die-hard enthusiast? I don't know. It's a mid-range smartphone, which is not performing in a lot of departments like gaming and even in the camera department for that matter. Is it an aspirational smartphone? Because clearly they're going the iPhone way and taking out the charging brick from the box. And that's something that the price conscious Indian consumer might not be very happy with. No charging brick in the box, a lot of marketing, but is it an aspirational device? Look, I think this is just a start for the Nothing Phone One. And you have to give these guys some credit for trying to disrupt the smartphone, the mid-range smartphone segment. When you're talking about pricing, this is 32,000 rupees for the base version and nearly 35,000 rupees for the top end version. I think at 35,000 rupees, this is a very expensive ring light. Much ado about nothing. Now, those of you who watch Tech Today regularly know that the show is not only about device unboxings and reviews, unbiased at that too. Well, of course, that's an important element of the show, but there's a lot more. We like talking about 5G, the metaverse, crypto, and stuff like that as well. We also like to focus on what's happening on social media and what's trending on the internet. Now, over the past few years, especially through the lockdowns, we've seen a lot of creators, stars that have been born on platforms like Instagram, TikTok as well at one point, and YouTube. But how did they get there? What's their creator journey like, especially from zero all the way up to a million? How do you monetize that? These are questions we want to ask on Creators Corner. Nabila caught up with one of the funniest creators on Instagram. Let's see what she has to say. Salori Gaur, you may have watched her uh, cracking you up on social media platforms. She's quite a popular, familiar face and someone you feel at home when you respond. I really like to ask you something that most of us always imagine. Do influencers make money? Do you make money? Does this... Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, it does. Tell me how. Uh, through brand deals. I mean, I obviously see uh, making money as a byproduct. I mean, I like I said, I did it for for myself. I mean, I wanted to make people laugh and uh, my friends laugh. And uh, I mean, I I have got someone uh, who manages my work now, and he told me that you can even make money out of this. I was like, okay, if this can happen, then why not? Now we are listening to such jokes. I really want to ask you how it is like you said, I, you, I could also call you an influencer. So tell me what it is like to be an influencer. I just want to know the methodology, the terminology of creating content, you know? I do not relate to the influencer part. I just like being called a comedian. And I don't know how others work, but my simple funda is, and there is no such terminology, I, I believe. My simple funda is to crack five good jokes daily. And if I laugh on those, and if my brother laughs on those, I think the video is good too. And that's how I would like to, you know, uh, carry on in day-to-day -day life. I mean, that's yeah. all I do. <laughs> Nothing else. If you, speaking of money and the, the kind of revenue that you generate out of your content, is it the content that really uh, brings in that money or you being an influencer? So, there were uh, a lot of people who the brand must have considered before uh, signing me. But they yeah. thought that my content is different from what others are uh, putting on the table. So they went up with me. 
so i think the content matters also we want to know which is the most fun social media app is it instagram is it facebook can i ask you i don't know if you can be biased here but what what do you really no, like I, I i like instagram and twitter equally uh twitter That's is where like, you get a lot more engagement ha huh? i get a uh, good engagement on instagram because i'm more active there I usually don't put up my uh, videos on Twitter. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, it's mm-hmm. really up on my mood. But mm-hmm. I enjoy Twitter a lot. I mean, the first thing I do in morning is like check what's trending and आज किसको आज किसको troll किया जा रहा है to say that. As much as tech geeks have dreamed for years and have been longing for teleportation to become a reality. Unfortunately, technology hasn't evolved that much. A lot of us have hoped to see a lot more than we have in DC comics or Marvel movies, but that's where it all stops when you're talking about teleportation. What if I told you that I'm here at MediaPlex, the India Today headquarters, and I just press a button, and then I will soon be in the Mumbai studios just like that. I'll see you there. Well, it's just another day at the office. It's pouring away here in Mumbai, and when we are away from the Tech Today studio, we always come to the office here. And I wear these glasses, especially when I'm driving. But this is Tech Today, and that's why we're going to swap with these glasses. Let's see if my colleagues can actually find out and tell the difference if I'm wearing smart glasses. These are the Noise I1 smart glasses, and they can do a lot of things. I'll give you the review and verdict in terms of what they can do. But first, let's see what everyone has to say. Hey Anusha, what's up? Hi, Ayush. Are you wearing new glasses? There's some difference. They look different. Yeah. Because these are my normal glasses, and these are smart glasses. Do, do, would you have found out that these were smart glasses? Okay, basically, what is smart glasses? I'm wearing smart watch. I haven't heard about any. So smart, smart glasses. glasses essentially is what we're doing on tech today. This is a really cool thing which every brand wants to do. This gives you all the notifications. You can control volume from here. Motion sensing happens here. You can also talk to Alexa or Siri from these glasses. They're flash resistant. Can I try it? Yeah, or is it just a gimmick? Awesome. There you go. Let us know in the comment section. Now I shall take my glasses yeah, yeah, sure. and move on to the rest I'm of the office. I'm surely going to buy this. So my colleague, my neighbor, right beside me. already accepts these glasses and says that they are cool do the others think so as well well let's find out <laughs> so the jury is divided on whether these glasses work or the traditional glasses work krishna Hi. we work together for a while now <laughs> that's right now tell me do these suit me or are these acceptable in office if i wear these to office will you think is weird or do you think it's okay well i'll be very curious these are smart glasses yeah. i would i don't think it's weird i'll be very curious about I'll be curious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do they look kind of cool or they look can they pass off as normal glasses? It's a little large but uh, they probably could. It's, it looks a little retro to me to be yeah. honest. It, it does look retro. But again the the whole thing of retro and the smart I think is a pretty interesting combination. Hit or miss? I would say a hit. Interesting, see? Maybe you're going to see me wearing these on tech today. So clearly half of my colleagues in office seem to like this. This is the deciding factor. Ah look. What do you think about wearable glasses? So this is the first time I'm wearing this kind of device, and uh, when you played the song, it was pretty clear. The calls were amazing in terms of clarity, and it really uh, liberates you from the clutches of those headphones mm-hmm. and iPods or whatever. But yeah, this is quite uh, liberating, and it's quite an experience. Yeah, you are suddenly you feel more empowered, and you can do more things. Spot on. See, this is what we like to cover on Tech today. How does technology make your life a whole lot easier? And you've heard the verdict from the boss man himself. Well, it's kind of interesting what my colleagues at office thought about these smart glasses. As soon as you open them up, they come on. I'll give you an honest, unbiased tech today verdict. Obviously, there are all sorts of speakers here at the bottom, which is why they could answer calls and also listen to all sorts of music. You also have microphones, and the company noise says that there will be an acoustic. flow of music that can and sound that can come to your ears from here and it does quite a decent job at that as well you also have motion estimation you can talk to your personal assistant there are all sorts of gesture controls to increase the volume decrease the volume accept a call reject a call these are basic features but i think this is version 1 
and an honest verdict at 6,000 rupees, this is kind of interesting because if you can replace your normal lenses, prescription lenses with this or make these a pair of sunglasses, this can do quite a decent job and that's about how much you would spend on a normal pair of glasses as well. With smart features and magnetic charging, this is good as version 1. If you're nitpicking, then maybe this whole speaker system could be a little thinner and be made a little less conspicuous. Also, a few more colors would do as well. It is a little clunky and a little, um, in terms of design, a little heavy to wear for a long period of time. Maybe that's something they can work on. And the future, perhaps, would be some sort of virtual reality or maybe an augmented reality version of these glasses. But for version 1 at 6,000 rupees, this is quite an interesting proposition. Noise is making all the right noises, but this is still a work in progress. Now, you could get all these fancy devices, laptops, iPads, stuff like that. But one thing that doesn't change is the innate sense and the question that we all have, which is to ask for Wi-Fi passwords. The minute you enter your relative's house or you enter a new cafe, the first thing you want is to not use your 4G data and perhaps get the Wi-Fi password. But what if you don't seem to remember the Wi-Fi password? It gets a little awkward asking for it each time. And what if your device doesn't remember the password? That's where Shivan comes in with a very innovative tech hack. Shivan, over to you. So these tech hacks on the Tech Today show have been all the rage because we've been getting some amazing feedback from everyone. Today, we're going to tackle a situation with another tech hack. And this is a situation which is very, very commonly faced by a lot of people. You have a laptop and you connect to different Wi-Fi's over the course of a number of years. Okay, now, there is a situation where you've lost all those Wi-Fi passwords and you really don't know how to regain those passwords or where do you go, how do you look for those passwords. You don't need to go anywhere because with this tech hack, your own PC, your own laptop will give you all those passwords to any Wi-Fi that you've ever connected to in any point of your PC's life. So to retrieve the passwords of any of these Wi-Fi's that you've ever been connected to in the past, what you need to do is simply first of all, go to the search section and type in CMD. CMD is essentially the command prompt and after this, you need to run it as administrator. Now, you need to put in a set of commands to be able to retrieve those passwords that you're looking for. First command is network share, but that's not what you're going to type in. What you'll be typing in is simply N-E-T-S-H without any space and press enter. The moment you do that, after that, you need to put in the second command, which is W-L-A-N space show space profile and press enter again when you do that now you'll get a list of uh, wi-fi names which you have been connected to and this can also include hotspots of any smartphones that you have been connected to in the past now here comes the point where you can retrieve the passwords of any of these wi-fi's that are listed here and they will be referred as user profiles okay so again you go and type in w l a n show profile and after that put in the name of the Wi-Fi connection that you have been connected to or the password of which you are looking to find. After that type key equals clear and there should be no space in that. Now when you press enter you will find the password there and then and that's how you retrieve these passwords simply. You can do that for each one of these connections and you'll find all of them. So this is yet another very, very simple tech hack for you to try at home. But do let us know what you felt about it. And if there's anything else that you want us to solve for you, then definitely leave us a comment and like and share this video. And we will definitely be back with you with more tech hacks because there is a lot for us to share with you on the Tech Today Show. Nothing. iPhone. iPhone. Nothing. Okay, I see the uncanny resemblance. A lot of people online are saying that nothing is a cheap looking iPhone. But honestly, there's no real comparison. It's apples and oranges, literally. But if you want us to compare the two or compare this particular device with any other phone in the market, then do let us know on our social media pages. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Give us your feedback. Until next week, this is Ayush Alavadi saying adios.